Hey guys, it's Ems, and welcome back to my reading room. Today, I'm going to be giving y'all my April wrap-up and May TBR. April was literally one of my best reading months. I read, I think, 10 books. I read 10 books in April, and I'm really excited to tell them to y'all. We also will get into my May TBR at the end of this video, but first off, I'm going to show y'all and tell you the ratings and reviews of the 10 books that I read in April. April. The first book that I read in April, I had actually started in March and finished in April, but that was Swift and Saddled by Lila Sage. I absolutely ate this book up. This book was a four out of five stars. I really liked Ada. I liked seeing her grow and figure out what she wanted to do. There was a lot of friendships in this book that I liked, and I also very much enjoyed the romance. I don't know if the romance was my favorite. With the four out of five, the reason it wasn't a five stars is because there was a lot of little things that I didn't like remember or enjoy with Done and Dusted, and it kind of comes back in this book but I did have a greater appreciation for the couple in Dun and Dusted for this one. I am very excited for the next one in this series which is Gus and Teddy's book because throughout both books I have just wanted their book and I know that wanting a book is gonna be like I'm not even gonna like I'm probably not even gonna like it but I am so excited and I'm just trying so hard to not set expectations. In Swift and Saddled, Ada is moving to this new town. She's getting away from her past and coming to this small town where some of her friends live. She goes to this bar and she kisses this guy. She doesn't know who this guy is. She doesn't care. It doesn't matter. Then she finds out she's gonna be working for him. You're gonna see the the push and the pull and just kind of everything that goes on when you accidentally kind of have this attraction to somebody you're gonna be working with. And she doesn't even realize until it happens, but I really enjoyed their story. The next book I read in April was The Rule Book by Sarah Adams. This is the second book in the cheat sheet. And just so you guys know, I read the cheat sheet in 2022, which was like when I first got into reading. I was halfway into this book until I realized that it was the couple from the cheat sheet. Y'all, I forgot their names and I didn't even like kind of think about going back to look or like even reread the cheat sheet. I was like, that'll stay. That was a cute book, whatever. I got halfway into this book and then at one point they like bring up the cheat sheet and that's when I realized that that was the couple. I was like, that was so embarrassing. Like I'm halfway through the book and he's like, hey, you want to borrow my cheat sheet? And I was like, that was his name? I was like, wait, this that was that couple? I'd like go back and like read it and be like, oh, oh, that makes sense. Other than that, I really enjoyed Nora and Derek's story. I gave this one also four stars. There was some parts in here that really were like confusing. I was like, I don't know why I need to know this because I really enjoyed their past, them having like this banter and connection, but there was some stuff that he does at the beginning that I don't really like. I was just kind of like, I don't know why he's doing this, I don't know. It was redeemable, so I think you should still read it, but there was just some stuff that I just kind of didn't really care for, and I didn't really enjoy reading her kind of having to go through that. But once you get to the end of the story and kind of midst through, you get connections and you realize why, and I did really enjoy that part of the story. I loved their dynamic and their banter. They were really good as like friends. I think their romance was just as good, but I really enjoyed them like kind of connecting as friends I was more. entertained all the way through if you need a fast read anything by Sarah Adams like you can just get through it quick so quick it's like you literally just read it and it's like a day worth of reading in the rule book you have Derek and Nora who are college exes Nora works for an agency and she's an agent for football players and then one day she becomes the agent for a guy named Derek Derek is her ex-boyfriend and you're going to see him kind of deal with her becoming his agent, but you also see what she needs to do, and they're both just trying to work. There's some other stuff that goes on in this. I don't want to spoil anything because I feel like if you go into it pretty blind or like semi-blind, you know, like the premise, I think it's very fun because there's some stuff that goes on in here and it's like not supposed to be a plot twist, but I was like, I was like, what? I was like, wait, why is this happening? So I think if you've already kind of know what's going on, it's... A little bit of a like the back is always gonna give you a little more than you want to know the next book i read in april was my most anticipated read of kind of the first half of the year i read wild love by elsie silver <gasps> oh my gosh y'all i gave wild love a 4.5 and i stand by i loved 
Rosie and Ford, their dynamic and the past that they had with each other was so perfect. But the reason I didn't give it a five stars is I've realized that I compare, after I read Off to the Races, I have compared literally every single Elsie Silver character to Billy and nobody has outdone her yet. Nobody has been just like her yet. And I loved the way Rosie was, but I just like couldn't. I was like, oh my gosh, this isn't Billy. I was thinking about Billy the whole time. I don't even wanna I don't even wanna bring that up because I don't wanna because most people don't give Off to the Races a five stars, but Off to the Races was my has been and will be my favorite Elsie Silver book. But I do recommend Wild Love. When you get to the brother's best friend portion of it, I love how Elsie Silver kind of writ that out. The way that you kind of see two people who love each other and what happens between them when it is like a best friend's brother trope. I think she did that perfectly. The bowling alley, I'm so excited for the rest of the series because the rest of the series is the bowling alley dads. Cora, I could literally sit here talking about Cora all, she was literally the sweetest and she just had this great aura around her. She really was just doing what she needed to do. I loved her dynamic with Rosie, but I also really loved her kind of connection with Ford. It was just so perfect and I love the way that they kind of conclude it all. I just don't think it was a five stars for me because there was some stuff that I didn't love or that I didn't really connect to. But I definitely think that if you read this, you probably would love it because I think anybody who reads an Elsie Silver book is obviously going to love it because Elsie Silver is literally, she's queen over here. Elsie Silver, she's queen over here. I really can't wait for West's story because I saw, I read the back and I'm so excited for her, the girl character in here because she's talked about in this book and I think I'm gonna love her. I think I'm, I think I'm gonna love her. I don't want to put any bad expectations or good expe I don't want to put any expectations on this, but I think I'm going to love her. Mark my words. I think I was excited for Wild Love. No, I am excited for Wild Eyes. I need a cover reveal now. I, I can't even. Okay, we need to stop. We need to stop because I am going to go on a tangent. We're gonna calm down. We're gonna we're gonna put this up. We're gonna, we're gonna set her to the side. The next book I read in April was First Down by Grace Riley. I gave this book a three out of five stars. I didn't love this book, but I didn't hate this book. There was some stuff. It was really quick. I think if you want a fast-paced read, this would be good, but it was just really quick for what was going on in this story, and there was some really deep topics that I feel like didn't get picked apart as well as I would have wanted them to get picked apart. If that's maybe, a, there's a reason they didn't pick it apart as much, but there was just some stuff that went on in this book, and I was like, I feel like we should have gone deeper into that instead of just kind of wiping it off. I really did enjoy the two main characters. I think they were very good together, but I didn't really feel the chemistry, like maybe because I had read it after Wild Love, and they had such good chemistry, and kind of after all the other books, that I'd read this month and they had really good chemistry in those. I didn't like love their chemistry in this one, but I did really enjoy the book in general. The plot lines were kind of fun and I love like the football aspect. I always love good sports romance, so I think I enjoyed that. But this book wasn't like, I, would, I wouldn't say this book was for me. If you love a good sports romance that goes kind of quickly, I think this would be a good book to read. I think the author wrote I think she has good writing, but it just was not my favorite style of a book. The next book I read was actually the first book in the Lovelight Farm series. I had read Mixed Signals in October of last year because I didn't know that it was the third in the series. And then Target had a buy two, get one free sale. And that's when I got first down and then I got two other books. But I did end up reading the first book in the Lovelight Farm series. When I started Lovelight Farms, I really enjoyed the banter between the two characters. I think their past is very present. Like you can feel the connection between them and what they had but I gave this one a 3.5 because I loved the banter and the tension and I really loved the town but the plot of the book was not my favorite. I didn't love kind of what was going on between the two main characters because it kind of didn't make sense to me. The plot that they were going through was like yeah that makes sense but then when the plot twist happened I was like I didn't love how they kind of portrayed that. I loved the town and I loved like the kind of found family between the entire city. The phone tree was one of my favorite things when you kind of read the phone tree. The two other characters, Lila and Beckett. Um, Lila and Beckett were some of my fave side characters. I really enjoyed them in here. I loved getting to know the town, but I think throughout the rest of the series, I'll kind of like love the town more. So I think this one would be a 3.5 because it definitely 
I think it could have been a four, but there was just that plot line that I didn't love and I didn't kind of sink my teeth into, so it wasn't my favorite. The next book I read in April was the second book in the Love Light Farm series, In the Weeds. This book is probably the closest book to a five star that I got this month. I absolutely loved In the Weeds. Evie and Beckett were some of my favorite characters. The tension, the banter, and the backstory between them was everything to me. The only reason that I didn't give it a five is because there were some parts in here that kind of bored me and I was like just wanting more. There's some stuff that went on and I was like come on I need more or like don't give me half. Either like, give me none of it at all or give me all of it and that's how I felt with this book. I was like I need more which normally you'd think is like a good thing but it was like no like I don't want another book, I just need more in this one. I loved her relationship with kind of her influencing in social media. I really enjoyed seeing a social media influencer as a main character in a book. Her kind of figuring out what she really wants to do, her kind of talking with her management team. I really enjoyed that. And then him with his family, him kind of like figuring out why he is the way that he is, I loved in this book. And then the main tension between them two and the tension between the whole town with them two and the phone tree. That's all I have to say. I love the town. The found family in this one even more was like some of my favorite just because I really love the found family in this series between all the characters and even like just the town in general. I love that so much. In, 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 in the weeds, you see Beckett and Evie who had a one night stand back in a long time ago. They meet again in this kind of weird situation where she's coming to the farm and he works on this farm and she doesn't know that. They see each other and then it kind of flashes forward and you're following them in the same town kind of figuring out what's going on what what's going on between them if there's something actually going on there if they actually want to be together or if it's kind of just like this hey one one time you know you can explore everything you see them kind of find the found family in this i've talked about that a million times but the found family in here is literally my favorite you meet some of the other side characters as well that will be in other books in this series or in this this specific book. There were some scenes in here that I really loved that kind of led me into mixed feelings, which I had already read. So I got to kind of see the build up of that. Cause I was gonna reread mixed feelings, but I didn't really, I was like, I didn't love mixed feelings. So I don't really want to reread it, but I definitely think In the Weeds was my favorite out of the rest of the series. The next book I actually had Discord pick for me. I did one of those little polls in the We Read That Discord and they ended up choosing the seven year slip and I was very excited with this one. I had been putting it off because I know that it's like an emotional read, but there was a lot of obviously deeper topics and kind of learning through to how to get through those. It's a paranormal romance, a magical romance. The apartment she lives in is always randomly falling back in time and she meets a person in this kind of time where she never really believed in these stories that her aunt would tell her. She would always just kind of be like, oh yeah, this apartment's magical. And then one day she moves into the apartment because her late aunt gives her the apartment and she's kind of going through everything. You see her kind of going through everything in the, in the past in this apartment, but also in her present time. And I really love the past and present kind of push and pull in this book but there's also the ending is what really got me i gave this book a 4.25 and the ending of this book is really what kind of pulled me to give it that i think it was a four at first but then i finally kind of got to the specific point and i was like oh this is like this is getting there and i know we hate the 0.25 but it, it didn't feel like a five like 4.5 it was like the 4.25 just felt perfect it was like that kind of push to be like almost there way that they portrayed growing and kind of changing in the world it was like i really needed that and i was like i really love the way that ashley poston kind of put that out there. in the seven year slip as i said clementine is living in this apartment that her aunt gave her in this apartment it falls back seven years and she meets this person in there and she knows what's going on but he doesn't and you kind of see what she needs to do what goes on and i don't i feel like going into this one pretty blind is good i've watched some youtube videos where people like kind of explain it and i kind of just like blocked that out of my mind and went into the book i really loved the kind of message and story behind it i think i could see why people give it a five stars but it wasn't a five stars for me the next book I read was Happily Never After by Lynn Painter, and I love Lynn Painter's writing. She's really good about writing just short and quick, fast-paced little rom com -y books. The plot line I had a lot of fun with, but there were some other details in here that I didn't love that much. I did give this a three stars, but I think it was because her young adult books are just so well-written and, like, 
very young adulty, which are kind of my favorites from her. I think anytime I read kind of like an adult book from her, it doesn't give me that same feeling. So I can't really rate it like how I would rate a young adult book by her. But this was like a three, 3.5, I think. I enjoyed the way they met and kind of the deal they go through. But the plot line that happens at the end, I didn't love that much. It wasn't like my favorite. The kind of like third act conflict, I would say, I didn't love. It was kind of like girl boy like what are we doing why does it matter and like I think it would matter but I was just kind of like I really did enjoy some of the banter and the way Lynn Painter writes her banter is just always so perfect even young adult new adult whatever like her banter is top tier and I did love the side characters in this kind of the little old people that she lived with they were, I loved them and even that there was a plot line in here with them that I was like whoa I was not ready for that wow that hit me like a truck whoa but I did really enjoy the story but it wasn't like my favorite ever my summary for happily never after would literally just be this right here their name the objectors their job to break up weddings as hired their dilemma they might just fall in love like I feel like that's a perfect explanation for this book because you do not need to read this this is a spoiler no because what they do is at the beginning of the book you're going to see Sophie is getting married to this guy and she doesn't really want to so her friend pays this guy to come break up her wedding and they meet and they kind of have this like hit it off situation where they like become friends and then she kind of starts working with him to help him break up weddings and she has this kind of look on love that she doesn't believe in love she doesn't think about love and so she really likes going to help him the next and almost last book that i read in april was i hope this doesn't find you by Anne liang i gave this book a 4.5 almost a five star because when i read it at the time i was like this is literally the best book i've ever read oh my gosh but then i thought about it and i was like okay calm down girly I sat on it for a day and I was like, okay, we're gonna give it a 4.5 because I loved the young adult like-ness of this book, kind of the growing up, the high school. If you give me an academic rivalry book, I'm all ears. Today, Tonight, Tomorrow, that was one of my favorite books. I literally gave that one five stars. But I loved the plot of this book, kind of the growing and figuring out like why she cares so much. Kind of what happens in this book is she is writing letters but they're emails. She writes emails that are drafts and she doesn't send them out to anybody because she kind of uses that as a way to express stuff. And she doesn't write in a diary like a, a normal person. She writes emails. And one day those emails get sent. What I've seen it explained as is like, you've got mail, which I've never seen. And then mixed with to all the boys because like Laura Jean's letters get sent out type thing. And I really did enjoy this one. I loved To All The Boys, and I think this did kind of give off that vibe. But the academic rivalry in here was definitely, like, my my pinpoint. I was like, yes! Uh, Eat it Sadie up. has emails, and they get sent out. But the ones that are the worst are, are her academic rival, and I think that is what I would keep keep in your brain. This book is pretty new and I loved it. Like I genuinely, I read the authors like one thing. I did think this was going to be not a young adult book when I read what the author was saying about it, but then I read it and I loved it being young adult. It was like 10 out of 10 young adults. The last and final book in April, I read The Summer After Me and You. I gave this a good three stars. It's a YA love triangle, but I didn't love the love triangle. Like when I look for a love triangle, I'm looking for like Summer I Turn Pretty to all the boys. Give me like girl abroad like that's the kind of love triangle i'm looking for but this did not give it to me because i wasn't rooting for either of them i could have cared less i was more invested in like her kind of like situation of growing up and like kind of her family dynamic rather than the romance and i think that's because it's a ya book i cared more about like kind of the growing and love in the family but i did enjoy kind of the friendship aspects kind of the people you meet in like learning about the people you meet. lucy is a lives on this beach town and she knows not to get attached to the tourists and then one day she gets attached to this guy who lives next to her who kind of always randomly comes in and then something happens and then he doesn't come back for a while and she kind of gets into this relationship with another guy and then he comes back so you're kind of seeing the summer of him coming back you're kind of seeing the love that she has for this other guy and it's kind of a love triangle but you're also seeing kind of the family dynamic what goes on when you kind of don't be with who you want to be with or even like who you do want to be with that kind of stuff and I did enjoy it for what it was but it just was not my favorite kind of read and I think if you love a good love triangle I think you would enjoy this 
but I just was not rooting for any of the couples. Those were the books that I read in April and I loved most of them. It was crazy. I had a lot of really good reads, most of them in the four star range, a little bit of the three star range. No five stars, but definitely close. I have not given a book five stars so it's off to the races and I don't want to think about it. But there is some new releases coming TBR. out in May. The first book on my May TBR is The Dixon Rule by L. Kennedy. This is the second book in the spin-off to the off-campus series. So this will be the second book to the Graham Effect and I'm really excited. It comes out May 14th and that is one of the books that I'm very much looking forward to. The next book is actually a book I got last week in Austin and it is the... It is The Roughest Draft by Emily Rimberly and Austin Sigma Broca. I've heard a lot of good things about this book. I think I saw like Larry Reed's talking about it sometime last month or maybe somebody else. I'm not sure who it was, but it definitely intrigued me and I've been wanting to read it for a little bit now. It'll probably be one of the first books I read in May because I got it and I am now definitely looking forward to reading it. I'm not sure what it's about. I definitely want to look into this one because it seems very fun and tropical and it's summertime now. The next couple books on my TBR is actually just Briar U. The entire Briar U series has came out with the covers that match my ones up there and I want to find them all. I don't think I'm going to be able to read them all around the same time since the way it's coming out in stores but I did see at Barnes and Noble they have a couple so we may go to Barnes soon and check some of those out and those are definitely on the kind of May and summer TBR. The last book on the TBR TBR was actually on my TBR last month as well, but I didn't end up reading it because I just got it today. I got it this morning and I don't know if I'm going to read it in May either because I don't know if I am personally ready for the hurt that it's going to give me because I saw that everybody's crying and I personally don't really like to cry to books. I don't like to read sad books, but um, we have Powerful, the novella. How many pages is this? Oh my God. Oh my God. Had like 300, 200 pages. I'm so scared. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna read this anytime soon, but it is on my TBR and it is powerful. The powerless novella. I love how tiny it is. It is so cute. I've I've seen a lot of um discourse about how tiny it is, but I feel like it'll look very good on my shelf. So, no complaints here because my it'll like go like right there or something but I'm so scared and I really do want to read it but I don't know I don't know we're gonna pretend like it's on my main TBR but this could be on my TBR for like when Reckless comes out I don't even know if I'm ready to read Reckless I don't even want to think about Reckless I'm not ready I'm not ready to think about Adina I'm not ready to think about what's gonna go on in Powerless I don't I'm Reckless I'm not ready there's apparently more of y'all I'm not ready and I'm not even ready to talk about it but I did buy it so it will be read at one point Will it be May? We can hope. That's my May TBR. Will I read my May TBR? Probably not. I don't think I read even half the books on my on my April TBR. I did want to, but some of them I just didn't end up reading. But we'll hopefully read The Roughest Draft, and will I read Powerful? Um, probably not. But I'm going to put it on there anyway. So I'm not ready at all, as you can tell. Thank you guys for watching this video. I have been doing a lot more vlogging on this channel, so if you want to go check out those videos, the vlogs are in the description or just on the channel. I did make a bookstagram, so if y'all want to go follow my new bookstagram, you can check that out. I have a TikTok you can go check out as well. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see y'all next time. Thank you for coming to my little library. Bye! See you later!